All right, um, thanks for coming to this event. And uh, it's a part of my uh, PhD uh, dissertation defense. Uh, the title of this talk is Battery Digital Twin uh, with Physics-Based Modeling, Battery Data, and Machine Learning. We have all grown up aware that batteries are a very useful element in our daily lives for powering our mobile phones, watches, and laptops. No matter how familiar they may be to us, most people are not fully aware of the absolutely crucial role that batteries can play in the fight against climate change and the future energy system. As we strive to create a carbon uh, neutral uh, economy in the Europe by 2050, batteries are the fattest of growing storage technology in both uh, transport sector and energy sector. Already today, the overall cost for owning an electric car is comparable to petrol cars. Batteries contribute significantly um, uh, in stabilizing renewable energy grids and can uh, compensate for the moments when the wind is not blowing, the sun is blocked by clouds and has set for the night. Compared to 2018, as we can see in this figure, uh, the global battery demand is expected to grow by a factor of 14 to reach 2,600 gigawatt hour in 2030. Although batteries are developing into a widely used technology in many sectors, they also undergo performance degradation with time during usage as well as storage, as is the case with almost all electrochemical systems. As an example here, the data from Nissan Leaf show us that the remaining capacity of the battery packs degradate with different speed and the variance is increasing with time. The degradation of batteries is directly connected with the key concerns of the customers as the degradation reduces the driving range and safety can be accelerated by fast charging and increases the cost of the electric vehicles and reduces the residual value of the vehicle after an extended period of time. Therefore, the degradation is one of the most important limiting factors for a wider acceptance of battery powered electric cars in the market. When we analyze this data further, we find that the time for these battery packs reaching their end of life when the state of health reaches 80% show us a maximum difference of 4.5 years. Due to the variances in manufacturing of these battery packs, the differences in the operation environment for each uh, electric vehicle and the operation strategy of different drivers. In order to satisfy the customer concerns related to battery degradation, I provided a comprehensive solution in my dissertation covering diagnostics, prognostics, and optimization of the degradation so that we are able to monitor the battery state in real time, predict the battery lifetime accurately, and optimize the battery use to restrain aging. I will begin with the introduction of the general idea of this work and give you an overview of the developed battery digital twin for full life circle control of batteries. To control the battery behaviors, battery management systems is an important component responsible for measuring the current voltage and temperature signals of the batteries, enhance the safety with cell balancing and charging control, and monitor the states of batteries with models and algorithms. However, state-of-the-art BMS is faced with problems in low computation power and low data storage capability, and therefore logging of the operational data and application of advanced battery algorithms is very challenging. To overcome these obstacles in battery management system today, BMS is revolutionized with bi-directional communication capability by Internet of Things and cloud analytics of the battery data with cloud computing in this dissertation. The operation data of battery systems measured and preprocessed by the BMS can be transmitted to the cloud, where the high computing capability supports the advanced battery diagnostics functionalities. The basic BMS functions can run on edge in local BMS and the advanced functions which require high computation power and historical data will be able to run in the cloud. The states of the batteries are not black box anymore and can be visualized to the users. 
the cloud-based battery management makes it possible to build up the digital twin of the battery systems and bridge the physical and the virtual world of the batteries so that we can take control of the entire life cycle of battery systems. In 2018, we have prototyped this concept and installed it on a battery system of our industry partner with the developed hardware and software platform. The key challenges remain in the development of the battery digital twin functionalities based on the available data locked by the BMS hardware. To this end, the strengths of physics-based modeling in extrapolation and the strengths of machine learning in interpolation and prediction are combined to extend the battery lifetime based on the data collected from both lab tests and field operation. Within this frame, 12 models, algorithms, and frameworks are developed covering seven key functionalities in full life circle control of lithium-ion batteries from electro level to system level. We are now able to monitor the electro level states of the battery in real time, such as the side reaction oil potential, which is critical for battery degradation in fast charging and at low temperature. The parameters of electrochemical models can be identified with the designed data-driven framework using artificial intelligence to reduce the time cost from several months to several days while increasing the model performance. With machine learning, the battery health indicators such as remaining capacity and internal resistance can be estimated with a small part of the charging data even under sensor noise or with incomplete input. With the estimated aging indicators as input, the developed deep learning model is able to predict not only the end of life points, but also the whole degradation trajectory together with the knee point in one shot for both capacity fade and power fade. The developed multitask learning model further increase the prediction accuracy and reduces the computational burden. Last but not least, we are now also able to optimize the use of the battery by predicting the maximum available charging and discharging power based on the internal safety constraints and design the operation strategy, which is acceptable, um, uh, which can also be uh, uh, adaptable over time to reduce the degradation speed and extend the battery lifetime. Now I will move on to three representing functionalities and give you a deeper introduction of the methodology and the results behind them. Let's start with the degradation diagnostics. Lithium-ion batteries consist of five main components, the cathode, anode, electrolyte, separator, and current collector. The lithium ions move from the anode through the electrolyte to the cathode during discharge and back when charging. The degradation in lithium-ion batteries is caused by a large number of physical and chemical mechanisms, such as SEI growth, loss of active material, and lithium plating, which affect different components of the cell. As a result, the cell's ability to store and deliver energy and power degrade until the cells reach their end of life. As a metric for the aging status of lithium batteries, state of health is commonly defined using one of two indicators, which are remaining capacity and internal resistance. As accurate SOH estimation is essential for operation, maintenance, and optimization of the cell, but the monitoring of it is a very challenging task due to the complex and nonlinear underlying mechanisms that contribute to the aging of the cell. As shown on the right-hand side, the cells manufactured under equivalent conditions can also have different degradation paths under the same testing scenarios, where 48 cells show large variations in degradation trajectories in the late life phase, resulting in large variance in end-of-life circles. There are several approaches to investigate the battery aging. In laboratory, we can conduct a post-motive analysis by opening the cells and analyze the material changes. These invasive methods are apparently not able to be used for working cells, which are still in operation. The most widely used online SOH estimation approach in industry is the parameterization of a battery model. 
The main limitation of this approach is that the accuracy depends highly on the choice of underlying battery model and the identification and tuning of the parameters of the models so that it captures all the underlying cell degradation mechanisms is a challenging and often very computationally expensive task. A controlled experimental approach is also widely being investigated. For example, the incremental capacity analysis ICA uses the charge voltage curves typically obtained by passing a very low current through the cell to simulate equilibrium operation. However, such data is very hard to be gathered in real operation scenarios. To avoid such limitations, there's a need for methods that can work with sensor data available from BMS directly, usually from a working cell. Here we propose a new online aging estimation framework with charging data in operation using neural networks. The voltage and time samples from the raw partial charging curve of the constant current, constant voltage charging operation of the cell are used as the inputs to the model. This sensor data is relatively easy to obtain from a vehicle during charging. The charging is typically a uniform process over a cell's lifetime since it usually happens over similar periods of time at the charging station or at home. As we can see, the shape of the charging curves is changing during aging. Here from the charging data of a new cell in dark blue to the data of the aged cell in light blue. This feature is correlated to the battery aging and can be used as the input to the neural networks to estimate the battery aging state. The choice of the input data window must be balanced between the availability of data and the information contained in the data. Commonly, the charging of the vehicle can begin from any value of state of charge of the battery, but typically will go to 100% before being discontinued. Therefore, it is clear that the upper part of the constant current phase of the charging curve will be reliably available over the cell's lifetime. And therefore, it's the choice of input to train our model in this work. Our chosen window accounts to 60% of the battery voltage range in testing and only 16% of the manufacturer specified full charge range. So uh, what is neural network? Neural networks are a type of supervised machine learning method which has gained a lot of success in different application fields. Neural networks consist of several layers of neurons and each layer has a set of neurons to learn the feature from input provided. There's also a weight associated with the neurons which tells it when to activate and these weights get optimized as the neural network learns through the training. The regression methods, for example, the linear models and the Gaussian processes need feature extraction from the raw charging data, which requires a lot of domain specific experience. The deep neural networks consist of several layers and have the ability to do efficient feature extraction from the raw data directly. This is achieved by optimizing the weights of the neurons based on the prediction error in each training epoch. Long short term memory, LSTM net networks, are a type of recurrent neural network capable of learning older dependence in sequence prediction problems. This is the behavior required in complex problem domains like machine translation and speech recognition. For example, a well trained LSTM model can predict the last part of the sentence after it knows the first part. For our case, the size of the input metrics or the number of time voltage samples is also changing during aging, which requires a processing step for regression methods. But the LSTMs can work with inputs with varying sizes and is ideal for the estimation of the SOH of the cell in this work. As shown on the right side, the best performing network after training was found to be a bidirectional LSTM network with one zero masking layer four LSTM layers with 50 nodes per layer and two dense layers. The framework of the online capacity estimation in this work can be split into two major parts, namely the initial training of the model and the deployment of the trained model to vehicles in operation. The experiments to gather aging data are the first step. 
after which the obtained data set is processed and stored in the cloud to be used for model training. The main task of the cloud server is to train the model with the data provided and serve the best performing mo model to the devices connected to it. The local devices can also forward the gathered output data, new input samples, and other metrics to the server, which can be used for future improvements of the models. This cloud connectivity feature is a key factor that enables a continuously updatable deep learning model. The local inferences can then be computed on relatively cheap embedded devices within the BMS of electric vehicles, since deep learning models are very computationally cheap to evaluate. As introduced before, this model is meant to be usable in small deep learning capable embedded devices which could serve as the processor for the data fed from the sensors attached to the battery inside an electric vehicle in operation. This will explore the possibility of using the GPU of the modern electric vehicles to support a better battery diagnostics. For example, the powerful vehicle computer of the Tesla shown on the left-hand side. To validate the on-age performance of the model in local devices, a small onboard computer speci specially designed for neural networks, the Jetson Nano from NVIDIA is used in this work. The processor in the loop validation was done after deploying the trained model into the Nano. The charging data arrays are fed to the Nano from which the capacity estimation model takes the input circle by circle as it would do in the case of real data availability. The objective is to validate the model by simulating the rise conditions, reflecting the real operation scenarios, and to demonstrate the computing capability and the viability of using the proposed model in such devices in future BMS. There are three validation scenarios for the capacity estimation model. In the first scenario, the normal data collected from the test is used as the input. The first figure shows us that the mean absolute percentage error, MAPE, of each cell in capacity estimation over the entire life are within acceptable tolerances, with the mean value being 1.24%. The other two figures show the comparison plot of estimation against actual capacity in the best and worst cases. It needs to be mentioned here that the uh, capacity estimates have regular capacity recovery due to the storage between each two circle runs. Although the black curve is the actual capacity, it was plotted based on the disparate checkup points and therefore cannot represent this recovery effects. As a result, the real estimation errors are even smaller than the values provided here. The second scenario highlights the robustness of the model. Well, dealing with noisy sensor data. The data generation method is like the first scenario with the addition of zero mean additive white Gaussian noise, which is higher than most industry acceptable sensor tolerances. The MAPE distribution, best case performance, and worst case performance are very similar to the estimation from ideal inputs, which prove that the model is extremely robust when prediction with um, the noisy inputs. The, meaning, uh, the mean MAPE for the entire validation data set is still uh, very small, well within 3%. The last evaluation scenario is used to highlight the predictive ability of the model when some part of the data is missing due to sensor error. The model was validated with 15%, quite large, right? So of the input samples randomly dropped before being forwarded to the estimation network. As a key feature of LSTM networks is that they can work with flexible input sizes. The input window shrinking or expanding doesn't hinder the model operation. The results demonstrate that the model accuracy suffers from mixed data more than the noisy data, which is expected because this is the data-driven uh, prediction approach. However, even with this handicap, the model still performs quite well. Let me briefly summarize the main points of degradation diagnostics. In this work, a capacity estimation model is created in, uh, for application in electric vehicles and the real world uh, operation. The remaining capacity is estimated from raw measured data during charging without the requirement of additional processing. The LSTM based uh, time theorist processing architecture allows the input charging curves 
to be variable in time steps and the prediction can be achieved even under large sensors, uh, sensor noise or with incomplete sensor data. The high accuracy of the model together with the fast computation times demonstrates its high potential in future industry application. With this battery diagnostics method, the battery health indicator at each time point can be determined and logged with the digital tooling for battery system in the cloud. With this past aging information of each battery cell, I would like to introduce a one-shot battery degradation prediction method for accurate battery life prediction. During the use of lithium ion batteries, a lot of the stress factors such as temperature, depth of discharge, and current load will strongly influence the aging speed of the batteries. These stress factors will be different among the electric vehicles due to the location difference and driving and charging habits. Although the prediction of the future degradation is very challenging, an accurate prediction of battery degradation is extremely important to help us understand how long is the lifetime of the batteries, how much is the residual value of the battery pack after several years of use, how to use these aged batteries in second life safely and cost effectively. Among the battery degradation stress factors, the intrinsic manufacturing variances may lead to a strong performance difference in the late life of batteries. As shown on, the, uh, on this slide, 48 cells manufactured in the same batch and labeled the same grade were aged under one specific profile to explore the intrinsic cell manufacturing variability and small temperature differences in battery packs during operation. As we can see, the variability in the degradation trends of the cells in early life is very small and only starts to increase greatly from the midlife uh, of the cells onwards. The accurate prediction of the whole degradation trajectory from early lab data is even more challenging than the data sets with high variability of the degradation trends already existed in the early life. This intrinsic variances induced degradation variability is very hard to be modeled with traditional empirical models with several equations. As shown in the figures below, the variances among the cells in end of life at 80% SOH, 65% SOH for the second life, and the degradation knee are significantly uh, 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 are significant and uh, may have 400 circles of difference. To predict the battery degradation trajectory accurately, I have developed a data-driven method based on deep learning. The model's input is the capacity or resistance time theories until the present time point. No other features of feature uh, selection process is required. The capacity of the cells can be measured directly with capacity tests in the training data set or estimated with any standard SOH estimation models onboard ABMS. The input approach is an increasing window of the remaining capacity array from the beginning of life of the cell to the present time point. This input theory increases in size as more historical data becomes available. And the model uses the increased information to generate improved predictions. The output of the model is the future capacity time series of the cell until the end of time. With the full uh, future uh, trajectory, uh, the end of life points for the first and the second use together with the knee point can also be determined. This output is a decreasing window with time goes on since both the input and output series lenses are generally constant in most of the machine learning models, they are insufficient to perform this task. To solve this problem, we use a sequence to sequence learning model which is the solution to any sequence-based problems, especially the ones where the inputs and outputs have different sizes and categories. If we look at the data we have in battery degradation, we can see them as two different factors of data representing the past degradation and the future degradation. The input and output data of different cells at different time points will change, which can be learned with sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning. The structure of the sequence to sequence learning model used in this work is shown on the right side. The encoder and decoder blocks both contain four LSTM model blocks. 
The encoder takes the input from the masking layer and passes an encoded vector, which is repeated and fed in each time step to the decoder to generate the output sequence. Subsequently, the output sequence is passed to two densely connected layers, which optimize the predictions and outputs the final output sequence. Based on the battery data and deep learning model, the degradation prediction framework in this work contains three major steps. The aging experiments are performed first on several cells of a similar type to the intended use case, obtaining a data set for supervised learning. This data set is then sent to the training server, which has computing power for model training and distribution. The server's next task after training is sending the best performing model to embedded devices. The connection is bidirectional since devices also transmit their prediction data and other metrics to the server, which can be used for future model updates. Since each cell's data is sent to the server tagged with the particular ID, a unique cell passport can be created, which is useful to track performance over the entire lifetime and also makes providing updates over the air to the models present in the BMS a trivial task. The cloud connectivity is a key factor that enables the model to be continuously updatable. The model output can be sent to various systems supporting operation strategy optimization, predictive maintenance, and full life cost analysis as needed. Here we show the predictive ability of the model in the best case on the left and the worst case on the right with increasing input size as more capacity degradation history is available to the model. From the results, the model is able to predict the capacity degradation trajectory accurately. The predictions are sufficiently accurate, even with input data only up to the first 100 circles of the cell, which roughly amounts to only 7% of the cell's total lifetime. Apart from the good performance in the trajectory prediction, the model also shows us beautiful results in the prediction of the key degradation metrics. These three figures show the progression of the absolute prediction error of the end of life in both first and second life and the degradation mean, where the degradation starts to accelerate. This metrics indicates similar performance with a trend of larger errors at the beginning of life corresponding to minimum input data to the model and improving prediction quality as more data becomes available. The trend is more evident in the worst cases rather than the best cases with some metrics being extremely accurate even in the early stages in the best case cells and generally more fluctuations evident over a reduced error band. The zero values at the end of each curve indicate that the prediction point is already reached by the cell. To further highlight the model performance, the model was compared with the typical uh, LSTM RNN uh, iterative prediction model, which is quite popular in battery lifetime prediction in literature. The results show us that our sequence to sequence learning model is a better performer in predictive ability in both the best and worst cases in all metrics. This is expected since the complexity of the sequence to sequence model is almost double of that of the LSTM model, which results in iterative model taking less training time. However, this iterative nature of the LSTM model requires it to run many times during implementation to provide the full curve output, whereas the sequence to sequence model can provide the entire curve in one shot, thereby the significantly reducing the computation time up to almost 15 times in average. Before I move on, I'd like to recap the main points in degradation prognostics. A deep learning based battery health prognostics approach is introduced to predict the future degradation trajectory in one shot without iteration of future extraction. The end of life point and the knee point are also predicted. The model correctly learns about the intrinsic variability caused by manufacturing differences and is able to make accurate cell specific predictions from just 100 circles of data. And the performance improves over time as more data become available. Compared to state of the art approaches, the one shot approach shows an increase in accuracy as well as in computing speed by up to 15 times. This work further highlights the effectiveness of 
data-driven approaches in the domain of health prognostics together with the digital battery health passport, especially for the second life use. Let's now move on to the last part of my talk, uh, which focuses on the operation strategy optimization of battery systems based on the physics-based modeling and machine learning. The operation strategy of multi-battery systems or energy systems will de directly determine uh, the current load, depth of discharge, SOC, and the thermal behavior of each battery system. These are also the stress factors I introduced in the last part, which will have influence on the battery degradation. Significant battery degradation, high current, and high temperature may also lead to safety issues. Therefore, a safety and aging conscious operation strategy is of critical importance. As the operation environment is changing and hard to be predicted, how to adapt the operation strategy according to multiple environmental state changes is the key challenge. In order to fulfill the energy and power demand, such as in sport vehicles, the trains, and energy storage for grid stabilization, using a single type of battery as the energy source may lead to an oversized configuration of the battery system if the power to energy ratio of the cell doesn't match with that of the system requirement. In contrast, less system weight and volume are achievable by utilizing different energy sources, their power electronics. As shown on the right-hand side, in this work, we focus on a hybrid battery pack for a high performance sport vehicle, which is constructed with a high energy pack consists of NCA graphite cells and a high power pack consists of LTO cells. The high energy pack serves as the primary energy source and the high power pack su supplies the vehicle with additional power to fulfill high power demands. The challenge here is an efficient energy allocation strategy between two battery packs that can guarantee the electrical uh, thermal safety and restrain the battery degradation at the same time. In order to simulate the real dynamics of the battery packs during the operation for the operation strategy optimization, various models have been developed based on experiments. The electric vehicle model is used to simulate the load for the hybrid uh, battery system and a different real world operation conditions. Here, both high energy and high power cells have been tested to parameterize their electrical, thermal, and aging models. Both the capacity fade and power fade of the batteries and their calendar and cyclic aging are modeled in this work based on the data from the aging tests. Generally, the state-of-the-art operation strategies for hybrid energy sources can be divided into three categories, the rule-based method, optimization method, and learning-based method. Due to the simplicity and how, uh, the low demand of uh, computational cost, the rule-based methods have gained great success for hybrid electric vehicles. However, the rule-based strategy optimizes the performance of each component of the system individually on the basis of the predetermined rule, which may lead to solutions far away from the opt uh, optimization point. The optimization-based methods have shown the ab ability to achieve uh, a globally optimal control based on the prior knowledge of future uh, driving conditions. However, the future scenarios are usually unavailable in real driving conditions, limiting the optimization-based strategy to an offline benchmark for other approaches. The learning-based methods, such as the reinforcement learning, can learn from historical experiences and optimize the control scheme gradually through the interaction with the environment, which provides self-adapted energy management strategies concerning different driving conditions. Considering the high performance uh, of the learning-based method in optimization ability, dealing with large state dimension and high adaptability, a deep reinforcement learning method is chosen for the operation strategy in this work. Reinforcement learning is a subfield of machine learning that teaches an agent how to choose an action from its action space with, uh, within a particular environment in order to maximize rewards over time. Reinforcement learning has four essential elements. The agent is the program you train with the aim of doing a job you'd specify. The environment is the world, real or virtual, 
in which the agent performs actions. The action is a move made by the agent, which causes a state of change in the environment. And the rewards are the evaluation of an action, which can be positive or negative. Compared to reinforcement learning, deep reinforcement learning methods use deep neural networks to approximate the policy or other learned functions without manual engineering of the state space, avoiding the limitation of state space discretization efficiency. Therefore, it outperforms the reinforcement learning algorithms for solving the optimization problem with multidimensional states, such as our case, to optimize the operation strategy. The objective of the operation strategy for the hybrid battery system is to find the optimal power split scheme between the high power and the high energy pack. The vehicle and the surrounding driving conditions act as the environment and the deep reinforcement learning based operation strategy act, serves as the agent here. In this work, we consider not only the electrical and thermal safety of the whole system, but also the energy loss and balance of the aging effect between the HE pack and the HP pack. SOC temperature, as well as the relative capacity of HE and HP pack considering aging are selected as the states. The vehicle's speed and total power demand of the hybrid battery system are chosen to represent the dynamics of the vehicle. Since the objective of the operation strategy is to split the power between the HE and the HP pack uh, op optimally, um, the power ratio of the HE pack in the total power is adopted as the action. Through the interaction with the environment, the agent can improve its power split scheme by maximizing the long-term accumulative uh, reward, which contains the reward terms regarding the energy loss discharging trend uh, balancing of the H HP pack, uh, maximum current and maximum temperature, and the equivalent aging cost of both packs. Considering the high com uh, computational demand in the training process, a vehicle to cloud framework for the training and implementation of learning based operation strategies is proposed in this work. In order to explore the real dynamics of the hybrid battery system, such as temperature and aging progression and the real world operation. We collected a large amount of real world driving data to generate the application oriented load profiles for the hybrid battery system. To accelerate the training process, we implement suitable hardware with high computational power in the cloud platform to train the deep reinforcement learning based strategies based on the collected data. After the training process in the cloud, the operation strategy is full, further validated in the processor in the loop test with a low cost embedded device, which demonstrates not only the effectiveness and reliability of the power split shim, but also the onboard performance, computational burden and real time feature. From the first figure, we can see that the high power pack in dark blue observes a large amount of the regenerated power and delivers sufficient power back to the vehicle under high power demand. In contrast to the continuous decrease of the high energy packs SOC in light blue on the second figure, the SOC of the, the high power pack in dark blue uh, fluctuates around 60%, which occurs with the fact that the high power pack works as the secondary energy source. Unlike the high energy cells over large uh, current at some peaks in single battery system as shown in the figure in the left uh, bottom corner, the safe operation of the high energy pack in the high battery system in dark blue is guaranteed by the operation strategy. From the last figure, um, we can see that the high energy packs temperature in the hybrid battery system in light blue is lower than that in single battery system, which is in green, which exceeds the maximum allowed operation temperature. This further demonstrates that the proposed strategy can constrain the temperature of the high energy pack within the safe area. To further validate the effectiveness um, of the developed operation strategy, the Q learning and deep Q learning based operation strategies were used as benchmarks. The DDPG based strategy proposed in this work reduces the training epochs by uh, 98% and 20% compared to the Q-learning and deep Q-learning strategies. It also achieves less energy loss and less 
ownership cost of the vehicle. This cloud-based multi-objective energy management strategy with deep reinforcement learning increases the electrical and thermal safety, and meanwhile minimizes the system energy loss and aging cost. The proposed vehicle to cloud operation strategy That's optimization framework provides excellent op opportunities for improving the energy efficiency and reducing the total life cycle uh, life cycle system costs based on the data collected from the transportation infrastructure, uh, infrastructure. For example, the traffic information, the weather information, and charging station information. The future trip information can be forecasted from the historical data for the real time ad adaption of the st a strategy according to the dynamic driving conditions. I'm now uh, approaching the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, the main contribution of my dissertation is the delivery of the solution to monitor, predict, and control the battery dynamics in both mobility and energy sectors with the battery digital twin. By integrating the information in, uh, in, in data collected from both lab and operation field with the uh, physics-based modeling and machine learning, 12 models, algorithms, and frameworks are developed covering seven key functionalities in full life control of lithium ion batteries from electro level to system level. This solution satisfies the customer's key concerns in batteries and contributes to the acceleration of the transportation electrification and energy transition. It not only uh, contributes uh, a lot in the viewpoint of research, but also attracts a lot of attention from industry and generated new commercial opportunities, such as the digital certificates for batteries, the battery warranties and insurance and predictive maintenance. I hope my dissertation is the good start point which can motivate further investigation from both academic and industry society in full life cycle control of batteries. I would like to highlight several ongoing work which is happening in our lab in this area. We are generating large scale battery aging data based on real world load profile and charging profile to support our data driven diagnostics and prognostics. We are also developing synthetic data generation method which helps OEMs to save the overall cost and time by 80% within the developing of data-driven battery aging models. We are also integrating machine learning and physics-based modeling in full operation range, fast charging for lithium ion batteries and testing its performance with commercial cells. Thank you for listening and I'm very happy to answer your questions. Thank you. <laughs>